Hello, my name is Joe Wetzel. I'm with the McLean Project for the Arts, board member with the McLean Project for the Arts, and I have with me today the pleasure of talking to Helen Schnetzler of Threads of Blessing. Uh, Helen and Threads of Blessing will be exhibiting with us at the McLean Project for the Arts Art Fest upcoming uh, in a couple, just a couple of months. Um, Helen, tell us a little bit about Threads of Blessing because it's uh, it's not just one artist that somebody will be seeing here. It is, I think, literally hundreds of hands that are going into mm -hmm. what you're showing. Is that correct? Yes, it is, Joe. The, we originally started in 2005 with 30 women. And since then, in the last 16 years, we've grown to over 650 women all over the country. Wow. Yes, as if they've understood the ministry and what it can mean for their lives. Um, it, it's a cash society where the women don't have much money of their own. And so when we started to teach them to do embroidery, that they could get funds for themselves, that they could use for school fees for their children. Secondary education in Uganda is all done in residence and it costs money, and they're all farmers, if you like, so there's not a lot of extra money to go around. It has to be earned somewhere, and salaries are so low. So if we sell a piece of needlework for, say, $50, that's probably a month's salary for them. School fees can be anywhere from 300 up to 500 depending on the quality of the school for a year. And so this fund money becomes very important to them, paying medical bills, for buying crops for their uh, gardens, um, all sorts of things, that, the everyday things that they need funds for that they don't ha can't have from a cash society. So a little bit on our end goes an incredibly long way on mm -hmm. the other end, if I'm hearing this correctly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Every, every thread counts. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> every thread yes. Makes a significant difference. How, how did you all yeah. start with threads? I mean, why not, I don't know, pick something else, but doing embroidery sounds um, oddball, it, random. Uh, well, it was a random conversation. My husband and I have been traveling to Uganda for the last 22 years. We go every year, and um, except for the pandemic we had to miss last year. But, um, and I'm a needle worker myself, I like it. And ah. so um, a center for women to learn, it's called the Women's Vocational Training Center, was completed in 2004 in an area called Nebi, a region called Nebi, which is against the Congolese and a Sudanese border. And I had a casual conversation with some women when we were there for the dedication about how they might, the classes that they might have at the Women's Center beyond reading and writing. Illiteracy is such a huge problem in Uganda, particularly for um, women in the last 10 years, education has become mandatory for um, all, all people, all children, um, up through primary school, that's seventh grade to them. And, but the, the women before that were more often pull out, pulled out of school by third grade to fetch water, build Work. fires, help with the family, take care of siblings. And so they have no education. They can't read or write. And so this center was built to help them and to get classes going. Well, I can't go there and teach them to read or write, but I can, I suggested taking my craft, which is needle, needle with a needle and thread. And at first they said they weren't interested because it was um, something they'd learned in primary school and there was no market for it. So we talked about it some more and I said, well, what about if we tried to see if you want to do it again and if we could get, find a market for it in the US. Well, yes, they thought that would be good. And so that's how it started. And our concept is not just to take the needle and thread and then take it home and do your work that way. 
It's to come together as a community, to learn to take time to share with each other your joys, your th things that upset you, um, study scripture, all of that into, so they become a community. And in the sharing of that and doing the needlework together, um, it builds something really wonderful. And so then, on, as, sorry. So in, in Uganda, when they come together, or I should say, when the needlework is being done, they do in fact come together. It's, it yes. is, you said it's a, the needlework is almost um, a byproduct of getting together to exactly. the support that happens with the community. Now you, yes. um, you're not just asking them to make pillowcases or something. You also accept commissions on this end uh, for altarpieces and uh, work yes, we do. We we have a group that meets weekly, and we take in commissions for church banners, um, altar hangings, and things like that, which we work on. Some of them can take us a year and a half, depending on the quality, what we're being asked to, to do, because a church banner is usually five feet high by about three feet wide. And we do those with all hand embroidery, some applique. And uh, so that, and then the funds that come from that go to buy supplies for the women when we go over or, um, Scholarships, we have a scholarship fund oh, great. to which don't manage the scholarship. We do an annual conference and the conference is for 250 women because that's the maximum that we can have at the Women's Centre. <laughs> and each scholarship, um, each group has to choose a number of women who can go because we can't take all 650. So uh, a scholarship costs $75 and for $75, you get a return bus fare to your own home. You get little food on the bus because some of those bus rides are 12 or 15 hours long. And you get four nights room and board. That's not half bad. No, that's, uh, yes, as I was saying earlier, uh, it's, an, I think, important for people to understand how far every little tiny bit on this end goes when it yeah. gets to the uh, yeah. gets to Uganda and your final product there. So it sounds like the, um, mm -hmm. you've really built up an almost a competition to be a part of Threads of, of Blessings over in Uganda. That's a wonderful thing. Um, it's been it's been good. We have a director over there now. Um, she um, ha is the principal at the the uh, women's conference center. And she came here in 2020 on March the 12th. And you <laughs> oh, know what no. happened on March the 15th? Oh no. And she came for three weeks and she was going to travel and tell her story and show needlework and talk about her, uh, what it's meant to the women, what the ministry has meant. So she was five months before she could go home. So we spent that time learning, showing her the mechanics of the minute ministry. And she has gone back and I'm seeing that ultimately down the road, the ministry could take a new direction with her running it from Uganda and finding a way to get the tapestries back to us. So that's, the, the, been... that's a, the silver lining in the COVID cloud. I mean, I know yeah. at this point, yeah. in our, all of our lives yeah. we're all looking for the silver linings in the COVID exactly. cloud. Wow, this is a great story uh, of yeah. how shiny sometimes that silver lining can be. Could I read you a, a testimony from one of the women so that you can feel what how it goes yes, for please. them? Please. Um, this, is, this is from Esther. She says, Dear friends, I am privileged to be part of Threads of Blessing, which is changed my life, that of my family and husband. I am also grateful to God for the gift of the hand she has given me. Through Threads of Blessing, my children are in schools because we can pay school fees. We bought three acres of land and planted tree seedlings. They are now three years old. We have also constructed a permanent house using money from Threads of Blessing. I had no hope that my children would attend good schools 
but God has done it for me through threads of blessing. I use the gift to teach other women how to stitch. Well, that's that's marvelous. I mean, that sort of sums it up very neatly, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yes. That's, yeah. Again, astonishing how much you've been able to stretch those threads and make an yeah. impact on the other side of the world. Yes, so they much. have their own style for embroidering too. They've created, um, when we went over, we taught them stitches, but the product that they produce now is totally, it's a tapestry. They fill the whole fabric with thread. Yeah, if you, if, and if, if, they you, want, if you haven't seen it, it's really something to see. It's, it's a unique, yes. Uh, it's a unique presentation of thread. I haven't seen that much thread on a piece of cloth in a long time, to tell you the truth. It really is unique. Well, Helen, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Our time was brief, as I promised you. Time would, would yes, fly good, very sure. quickly, thank it you. has. But I'm hoping that others will stop by and see the work, because you, you need to see the work live and in person at the McLean Project for the Arts Art Fest, um, just around the corner and um, get in touch with Threads of Blessing. Follow, uh, follow them uh, online, see a little bit of a flavor of what it is that they're doing. And Helen, thank you again for your time. We look forward to seeing you in a couple of short months now. We will, I'll do. Thank you so much, Joe. Okay, thanks and bye now. Bye-bye.